On February 10th, a tweet was sent out by the great Brett Akimoto of ESPN to say that this fight will be taking place at featherweight. We have Umar Nurmagomedov making the return to take on Boom Brian Kelleher, a guy who loves to rap on the can. And what I can tell you about this fight is it is all fury. It is full throttle, just like the energy drink that I had for the first time in the prediction videos a few weeks ago. It is on. And when I look at this fight, Nurmagomedov has that last name, but he doesn't fight like Habib. He doesn't even fight like Tagir Ulanbekov who's on this fight. Fights a little bit like Usman Nurmagomedov. Fights a lot like Zabit Magomed Sharipov. And when I look at this fight... There's so many things to like. I mean, we have a show on this channel two hours before the prelims. If you haven't checked it out, it's called Question Mark Kicks. Umar Nurmagomedov throws the most question mark kicks I've ever seen an MMA fighter throw in MMA. I mean, Wonder Boy might throw a couple of them out there to razzle-dazzle. Umar, in his last fight, threw one to start the fight and then just continued to throw them. So, I look at this for Umar Nurmagomedov, an incredible prospect, but... I have a lot of questions. I mean, he's celebrating a birthday this week, so happy birthday to Umar. you love to see it. But when I look at his overall progression, this is a guy that I've been following since the start of Fight Night Picks. We started established 2018. Umar started his fighting career in 2016, but he was a guy that there was conversations around him. He was fighting with Fight Nights Global, and I thought, man, I got to tune in and watch this guy fight. And so I did. The best fight you can go back and watch, and it's crazy because we talked about this in all of those fights that got canceled and moved yeah. around before he made his UFC debut. We were saying, go watch him fight Sadiakub Kakrakmanov. Kakrakmanov's going to end up in the UFC. And what happened? He's here and he's good. But when we do look at this one, that fight was so much fun. It was back and forth. They both had successes in the stand-up. Umar gets the win. Then he goes out there and takes on Taras. Geskriev over with uh, GFC. It was a fight that he was kind of set up to win. He takes on Sidmar Honorio over with the PFL. Another one of those prospect showcase type of fights that they have sometimes, like a one-off. Honorio, former flyweight champ with CFFC, a little bit late in his career, but he fought a good level of competition. And in that fight, Umar took over. And then he fights Brian Gonzalez over with GFC. Another one of those, hey, we're going to bring in a guy. He's probably going to lose, but... Again, Umar looks great in that one. So they have him booked in multiple different fights. They end up falling out. He gets Sergey Morozov. He beats Sergey Morozov, and I'll talk more about that fight. But originally, this fight was supposed to be Umar Nurmagomedov in a few weeks in London against Jack Shore. And then I saw a couple of like Instagram stories that they move things around behind the scenes. They wanted Umar to fight in the States. So he ends up with Brian Kelleher who's just coming off of a very impressive decision win against a short-notice opponent, because he was supposed to take on Saeed Yakub Kakrakmanov. Up a weight class in this one against Kevin Kroom, and he looked pretty good in that fight against a big, big guy for the weight class. Before that, dominated Domingo Pilarte everywhere that fight took place. I'd hope so, though. Primarily on the ground, but if you do look at that fight, so much cage control in that one. He took him down and held him down. But again, for Brian Kelleher, there's very few guys that have been able to really figure him out to the point where they push such a pace with the wrestling and the striking. So that's what makes this fight so much fun because Kelleher swings with vicious intent. But I think it's fair to say Brian Kelleher is one of the most well-rounded fighters in the UFC because I don't think any one of his skills really stands out all that far from any of his other ones because when you look at Brian Kelleher, what are his overall strengths? Well, he's a pretty good offensive wrestler. He has good defensive hips. He has really good submission ability with his defensive submissions. Pretty good offensive submission ability as well. He's got really big power on the feet, and honestly, he doesn't have the worst level of volume on the feet either. The problem is that when he fights a specialist, and when they take it to where, or to what they specialize in, I should say, that's when he does really struggle, and it's been interesting for Brian Kelleher, because a big red flag I always have when we're trying to break down a fighter in their overall career is, how have they lost throughout their career? Do they consistently just lose in one manner, or have they been out-wrestled? Have they been outstruck? Normally, you don't like it when a guy loses in a variety of ways and Brian Kelleher does kind of find himself in that category to where he has been finished he has been out wrestled he has been submitted but I don't necessarily look at that as a massive negative with Brian Kelleher I look at it as more he can sort of hang in any of those areas but again when you really break down his record Cody Staben was able to out-wrestle him. Guess what? Cody Staben out-wrestles a lot of guys in this division. Ricky Simone was able to out-wrestle him. Same thing. I just worry about Brian Kelleher anytime he goes up and fights great fighters, but that's why I think he's a perfect litmus test for any prospect that you have high hopes in, because with Umar Nurmagomedov, I think we both see what his ceiling could be, and 
Here's the problem. You never want a fighter to fall into that sort of Kamar Usman, Islam Makachev category to where it's okay. We know how talented you are. You just don't really have enough hype sort of in the broader audience to really get you those opportunities. Hopefully for Nurmagomedov, if he is able to win this fight, it immediately puts him into the rankings to where he can go after sort of the bigger fish in the pond because I really do think Nurmagomedov has a bright future ahead of him. But beating Brian Kelleher is no easy ask. And we're going to get to the odds a little bit later. But the big thing about Brian Kelleher, I, I put this on Bobby Green too. He's never going to cheat himself out of a fight. I think that's important to say. Like, Brian Keller is going to show up the best version of himself no matter what. He just beat Kevin Kroom up a weight class a month ago just because, yeah, he can do it. He's Brian Kelleher. So I think he's going to make a really good account of himself. I think this is going to be a very hard fight for Nemega Medoff, but on the feet, I think Nemega Medoff's a little bit faster. I think his kicks are a lot better. And on the mat, if it does get there, I do think Nurmagomedov is going to be able to outscramble Brian Kelleher, and if that is the case, I just don't know where Kelleher is going to be able to have sustained success throughout this fight. I have some reservations about this fight, which might sound a little strange, but when I look at it for Kelleher, you're right. I mean, he was able to out-wrestle Kevin Kroom. He dropped him in that fight. He got totally out-wrestled against Ricky Simone and outstruck. He got completely outstruck by Cody Stamen. The wrestling hardly even played a factor in that fight. Montel Jackson was able to have that weird scramble into a submission in that fight. That was kind of crazy. John Lineker completely outstruck him. And then his other loss is to Marlon Vera. But we look at the wins. Performance bonus over Iri Alcantara in his debut. Fight of the night against Damian Stasiak. Performance bonus against Ode Osborne. Fight of the night against Hunter Azure in a weird fight where he lost the first round, but in the second round he rallied back to great effect. And a performance bonus against forever regional champion Ray Rodriguez. So, And I think we have to mention, he did beat Henan Barrow on the saddest last little run I've ever seen of a former champion in the UFC. It was very sad. But again, for Brian Kelleher, he's like a new age Nick Lentz. He loves the defensive guillotine. He loves those chokes. He can try and throw in a bit of a Darce every now and again. His wrestling's good against bad wrestlers. His striking's good against bad strikers. That's pretty much it. But I mean, 8-5 and five in the UFC... And you're never going to find me, A, missing many fights, but B, missing a Brian Kelleher fight. We Always talked fun. a lot about him as a big underdog in this one. So let's shift the focus to Nurmagomedov. Dynamic Striker doesn't even begin to talk about it. And I know I mentioned question mark kicks at the start of it, but this guy throws a ton of kicks, a barrage of different strikes. Can he fall into the John and the Martinez category of you also have hands? Yes, he can. We saw that last weekend when he took on Alejandro Perez. But for Umar Nurmagomedov, this is the biggest thing for me. His last fight was way back in January of 2021. I want to make sure I get that one right. Yeah, it was a year and a month ago against Sergey Morozov, former M1 global champion. And I know some people might look at the number on the page and go, geez, did Sergey Morozov really lose to Douglas Silva day on Josh? He did. Was he bad. was doing well at the start. And then D Silva, the tiny tank, he has knocked him out and choked him out and looked amazing in that fight. He just really had a good uh, comeback in the second round. I've never seen somebody completely outgrapple Sergey Morozov in a fight. Umar Nurmagomedov did that, and it didn't even look hard for him. And he's probably better at striking than he is at grappling, which is the crazy thing. And that's why I do bring up the scramble ability of Nurmagomedov. Because for Kelleher, he's really good in set positions on the mat. For some reason, we bring this up a lot when we talk about uh, Antonina Shevchenko. Her jiu-jitsu is good in a traditional sense to where she has good full guard. She has good half guard. But when you get to weird in-betweens, when you get to scrambles, that's when she struggles. This is a similar fight to when Casey O'Neill fought uh, Antonina Shevchenko. It's where Kelleher, good in set positions, good in the full guard, good in the half guard. But on the in-betweens, I really do worry about him with someone who's as fast with their scrambles as someone like Nurmagomedov. But this is the area I think Kelleher can have success, and then I'll hand it off over to you. If Nurmagomedov gets caught in his kicking range, because again, when you're throwing kicks, you can't move your feet. One is in the air, one is on the ground. If Kelleher can time one of those kicks to then close the distance and land a bit hook. We've seen him have power at a higher weight class, and it might be able to hurt someone like Nurmagomedov, but outside of that, I think this is going to be an incredibly difficult fight for Brian Kelly. Nurmagomedov throws a lot of those kicks, and they're fast, but sometimes he resets, and he really dips himself out there to where Brian Kelleher can hit him. The other thing is, again, his last fight was in January of last year. He's been out for over a year. Why? Because he tore ligaments in one of his knees, and that's why he's been out. It was a six-month recovery, so they said on the Instagrams. Looks like he's been training and so on and so forth. Looks to me like the camp was in Russia for this one. So, again, bit of a hometown feel for him. I saw Bubakar Nurmagomedov in some of the pictures. But when I do look at this fight, Matt, 
It is an interesting one. I mean, we look at the odds. Nurmagomedov open to minus 270 favorite. He's a minus 655 right now as an average best fight odds. For Kelleher, open to plus 230. He is a plus. Yikes, 450 over on the best fight odds. We look at the total votes on Topology. Yeah. I'm not even going to make it a surprise. 578 total votes, 92% Nurmagomedov, 60% by submission for the 8% that have Kelleher. 46% by submission, 31% by knockout. I have Umar Nurmagomedov in this fight. The odds are too rich for my blood at this point. And again, that knee injury does scare me a little bit for a guy that relies on his athleticism because for Nurmagomedov, it's not a lot of, I punch you, I strike against you, I back you up to the cage, I take you down, I rinse and repeat. Umar is the type of guy that's going to fly across the cage for a takedown. He really does put a lot of weight into everything. Like These are big body movements that he makes. So I'm interested to see how this one, A, fits into the featherweight division because you assume both these guys are going to move back down to bantamweight, you would think. And B, if Nurmagomedov wins, how does he do it? Because Brian Kelleher can be a tough puzzle to solve sometimes. He can be, but the issue with Kelleher is that he doesn't have a lot of offense from the kicking range, be it offensively. And he has good blitzes, but again, he's going to almost have to rely on Nurmagomedov to make a big mistake, to really capitalize on it, and then get the win. I just don't think Kelleher has enough volume on the outside to really match Nurmagomedov if this fight is fought at kicking distance. And then if he gets on the inside and if he is able to take it to the mat, I do think Nurmagomedov is the better grapple and he's the faster grappler too so I just think stylistically this is a really hard matchup for Brian Kelleher I know what you said about the odds and how you know too rich for your blood I would agree with that but this is one of those fights where it's like don't overthink it he's a big favorite for a reason and that's why I do like the Mega Man off big time fight coming up this weekend you let us know who you have is it boom Brian Kelleher is it the return of Umar Nurmagomedov big time fights left on this card Five rounds in the co-main event. Five rounds in the main event. Everybody has fun. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.